I'm Angie from Organic Plant Magic. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator and Educator. Organic Plant Magic is a small family owned business based in Marshfield, Massachusetts. I'm pretty sure you can tell that I'm not in Massachusetts at this point, but I am originally from Brant Rock and I currently do live in um, beautiful, sunny Southern California. So this is my small family farm where we do use a lot of organic plant magic. Today, I wanted to share with you all a little bit about biodiversity. Um, when we created Organic Plant Magic, the idea was to create something that was safe for all, safe for us, safe for the environment, safe for our children, our pets, wildlife, the ecosystem, our water sources. And when I say safe for all, it really is. What's above ground, what's below ground, anything that swims. So we're really trying to embrace and preserve everything around us. And a huge part of growing food and growing ornamentals and even the landscape around our homes is what do we do to preserve what's already there and also attract more of what's beneficial to, to our environment. Um, so one of the things I wanted to share with everyone today was something that we created on our farm um, and it's been a bit of a buzzword lately, it's called an insect hotel. So this is our insect hotel. While it may not be the Hilton, our insects don't mind things being a little dirty, a little grubby, and not so organized. There doesn't need to be any nice white linen sheets, no room service. They just want some nooks and crannies to hide in, places to lay their eggs, and spaces to hide and um, avoid some of their natural predators. So this is one of the ways that we're working on attracting and helping maintain the beneficials, the pollinators, and all the little critters that you know visit us here on the farm. So the idea when we created this was actually inspired by something I saw on a really cool trip to Moab. Beautiful farm, and they had several of these placed around the property. Um, first and foremost with the insect hotel, what we do want to suggest is that you don't place it close to your dwelling. I mean, in a yard, you can obviously place it along a hedge line, maybe by a shed. Um, buy your garden, buy some of your fruiting trees, flowering plants, but not tied up against the house. You are attracting some things that you might not want to bring in the house. So our insect hotel was built um, by spending very minimal money. I think the only thing I bought was a beautiful bowl to create a, a simple little water feature for the, um, the whole area. We do have a lot of water here on the farm, but it's nice to have some standing water that can be changed frequently. Um, so that and just addition of some twine, but this started out as a really old ugly bookshelf that we were debating what to do with and um, capped it off with some cool old fence plank that we had laying around from another project. So point being is what we're trying to promote is not buying more, it's just using, reusing and really embracing the nature that is around wherever you wherever you live. So obviously living here in Southern California, we do have very different plants than you guys have on the South Shore. But plants are plants, pests, insects, critters, it's all the same. It's just use what you have and attract what is good for your space. So um, these are all um, pieces of bamboo that I acquired from a friend. So I just chopped everything up into smaller pieces to fit into the case. Um, some old block that we had from a project. You'll notice that the blocks all have a good size hole drilled into them. So you will need some power tools if you have access to it. Um, the holes are really, really, really important for insects to go in and actually lay eggs. So that's a huge part of this is to create a space for them to lay eggs where predators and birds aren't always gonna be able to gain access to it. Um, old terracotta pots. Um, I hate throwing away terracotta pots, so I'd been saving a bunch for a while. Um, so I did get to smash them up and reuse them. The nice thing is they have areas that go up and underneath so they can kind of stick their eggs onto the, the rough surface, which you'll notice with a lot of your pots around the house. You'll see spider eggs, sometimes praying mantis eggs, and other things will lay their eggs onto those surfaces because they do stick. So that's another great idea. Um, some old wood that we had, some firewood out of the firewood bin, that was great. Um, some other logs that we had laying around. Stone, we just recently worked on a really cool project here on the farm, so we had a lot of big chunks of stone. Stones are great. Um, some of your other things that um, like to go under and stay warm and dark, that's what the stones are wonderful for. Pine cones are great additions. And then the other thing is adding plant life that you would normally find around your property. Um, 
I would say in Massachusetts, you can go do a lot of your, just your typical shrubs. Evergreens are great back there. The other thing you do is change it out. Change it out seasonally if you want to make this more of a decorative piece too, which is totally possible. I added in some plants from the pepper tree um, and a few other items. So you can change it by whatever's flowering. Um, so that's kind of, the idea is to use what you have, bring it all in and create a space that is also attracting and safe. Um, feel free to throw pots and plants around it. So, I mean, plants and pots, sorry, around it. That's another great option. Um, the other cool thing is keeping it, um, is covered, is, is smart. We don't want this to actually get too, too inundated with, you know, weather. So I, I know we're going to get hit. Um, here I'm actually under what used to be an old greenhouse structure. So this doesn't get as wet here, but it does just create a little bit of safety. Um, the idea behind an insect hotel is creating a safe space. It doesn't have to be perfect. There is no rhyme or reason, no equation on how you actually create it. It is an amazing project for kids. As long as you do some of the heavy, you know, the heavy lifting and the chopping, kids can have a blast with it. Um, the twine is great. Kids can tie things up, stuff it in there. They can decorate it, paint it, hang signs on it. Um, this is meant to be a free for all. I've seen several of, the, of them over the years. I've seen some really cool ones where people take a pot, turn on the side, fill it with bamboo. The halves of bamboo are great. If you do have a friend that has bamboo, you just need a chop saw to really get these looking pretty good. Um, but yeah, if you Google insect hotel, you'll get to see many versions of this. So I don't think there's a wrong way to do it. Um, here on our farm, we're actually rehabilitating our property because we, this was a commercial growing area. So we've had a lot of inundation of not so good things, not so beneficial. So, um, through working with plant magic and also just my own background in agriculture, the idea was to rehabilitate the farm, not just work it. We don't produce anything for sale. It's actually all just for our family. We do keep everything organic. With that being said, I've noticed an immense difference in what we've been attracting to this space. We're seeing a lot more wildlife, mostly in the, in, with birds. Um, we've had a lot more owls, a lot more of the smaller birds, the songbirds. We've, it's just been tremendous. And even with the soil, I can see such a huge difference. Um, so the idea of biodiversity is, you know, the old idea of farming being a monoculture really it's kind of you know spilled over to how people deal with their landscapes in their yards too and it's keeping things pretty and organized and categorized and kind of sterile nature doesn't work that way and so in creating biodiversity there's a couple key points that really make it um i say key approaches i should say that may getting to a point of inviting all the good things into your space really doable and it's not that this is a time consuming, costly effort. Like I said, embrace what you have. Um, you know, uh, depending on the size of your space, one of the things I always have to laugh at here in Southern California is the very neat and tidy yards where they actually use concrete and lots of fences. Nothing wants to live there. Most of us humans don't even want to live like that. The idea of leaving some brush, leaving some higher, taller grasses, insects, birds, you know, everything that also lives on the layer of the soil on the surface and below, they need coverage and they need root structure and they need moisture. And so by creating hedge lines with some more native and wild plants is a really great way to start. You don't need to weed whack everything down. It doesn't need to be sterile. It actually needs to be natural. Um, out here on the farm, we had some embankments that we, we were dealing with erosion. So we did do some hydro seeding of some native plants. And then we also mixed in some California native wildflowers that are also um, great attractors for um, pollinators. As that keeps filling in, the idea is that we will not touch it ever again. It simply just grows, reseeds itself, grows some more, becomes dormant and so on and so forth. The idea of creating the biodiversity is that you're not creating more work for yourself in the long run, you're actually creating far less. Um, so with that being said, maintaining a little bit of messiness, but you can still make it look really beautiful. Um, wildflowers are one of the best ways to do that. And utilizing your native plants. Um, I will say hitting up your nurseries who are really knowledgeable on natives is, to me, is just one of the most amazing ways to embrace where you live. There is no one fit for every area. 
So becoming familiar with the native plants in your areas is obviously just, you know, so invaluable and incorporating those. And then also incorporating some of your seeded mixes that you can just, you can kind of go willy nilly with and sprinkle all over the place. Um, and I guess that leads me into another thing is incorporating more native, getting away from your, maybe your big box store, um, good for all type plants. And then also navigating the invasive plants that you do, you do see in every region of the country. Um, we have yuzu here, which is horrible. Um, and so, you know, conquering and navigating your invasive species is a really good, um, a good way to, to help, um, help rebuild the biodiversity on your, in your property and, um, and make sure that that doesn't take over what does need to thrive. The idea, you know, obviously invasive says it all, it will take over everything good, bad, or indifferent. So navigating your weeds, and I, and I wanna say that invasive weeds, not all weeds, I actually love weeds. So here on the farm, we have a lot of nettles. I leave them, we eat them. They're kind of a pain sometimes if you're, if you're wearing a pair of flip-flops, but you navigate and just obviously maybe don't remove all of them. You know, that's the thing. Dandelions are amazing. So you have to pick and choose, you know, but navigating your, um, your invasives um, in a non-chemical way by far is one of the biggest, um, huh, is one of those things. It's just one of the biggest things that, you know, can really save your space and also impact you know globally what we're doing as far as minimizing synthetics in our environment so if you can navigate weed control and pest control and i say pests too because obviously we do have some pests that we don't want on our properties but navigating those by natural means above all is is really um you know responsible so that's another key component um, so that kind of goes with your plants, you know, there's, there's the, the fundamental of your ecosystem. And that's why it is, you know, we're talking plants, landscape, um, for us at plant magic, we do have a couple, um, products. We have some new ones coming out too, which is really fun. But our, our, um, first product is our soluble plant food. And that's been around for quite a while. Some of you may have seen us before. Um, the soluble plant food uh, feeds the soil, feeds the plants, and it actually for us here on the farm has rehabilitated our soil. So it's phenomenal. With that being said, using products like that on your property and really feeding the land is a really wonderful f way to actually enhance everything. And everything will take notice. Wildlife is really smart that way. Nature is smart that way. Plants are smart that way. So using products that make an, a positive impact without being harmful to anyone is the way to go. Um, so um, the other thing to do is, you know, if you're incorporating say um, edible gardens in your landscape, really being mindful what you're using on those too. Obviously we're ingesting that um, and you are looking for pollinators to visit your, you know, your edible gardens. So consider what you're putting on there because you have friends visiting, trying to do a really good job for you to make sure you and your family have more food. So be really mindful with that um, and make sure they have plenty of food and water while they're there. So that's, you know, that's, that is our responsibility as humans. Um, so with the biodiversity, um, you know, matter, and I know everyone on the South Shore is really great with this. That's one of the reasons why I loved living there for so long is attracting everything. So birdhouses, I love birdhouses. Um, you know, here we have a lot of barn owls. So that's a big thing for us is to attract that. For us, the owls are really great gopher and ground squirrel, ground squirrel control. We don't wanna disrupt that balance. As soon as the birds go away, the gophers and the ground squirrels get really invasive and there goes all of our, you know, our beneficials. And those, they're destructive. So by creating the balance in the system and attracting the good, the, the not so good will naturally start to fade away. Bird houses are phenomenal. If you can find some really high spaces for your owl houses and some of the larger birds, great. Um, having some of your smaller birds, songbirds, you know, bluebirds, I mean, you name it. I, I know there's a bird house for everyone. And the other one is bat houses. Uh, you don't see as many bats as you used to. There's a good reason for that. And we really need to honor it and bring the bats back into the ecosystem. 
welcome them, give them safe spaces. You know, they're gonna take care of things. They're gonna take care of the mosquitoes. They're gonna take care of all the other insects that maybe aren't so great for us as humans. An amazing food source for them. So actually adding in far more houses and then stuff like this, an insect house, that's bringing in another whole realm of life into your space. Um, and once you do that, once you bring in those houses and stuff, please be mindful of light. Light is another thing when you're talking about biodiversity. We, you know, pollution is pollution in so many ways, but having very heavily lit areas can be a deterrent for a lot of our um, more natural creatures. And, um, and so just kind of limiting your light and um, keeping things more back to basics. So creating space for everyone to live is super important. Adding water, and um, this is such a small thing, um, but having larger areas of water is so important for everyone. Um, here we get very hot and very, very, very dry, and we're kind of starting to lead into that season now. So having water for our pollinators is really important. I, I will say, um, any of our water sources here on the farm, you'll see a, lot, a huge congregation of our bees. We don't want to do anything to deter them, but we also don't want them by every water source. So creating some small areas of standing water or just a little bit deeper water for some of our insects and birds and, you know, any other beneficials you might have visiting your property is really, really smart. Keep it fresh. Do not add anything to it. There's no need for food dyes or colors or anything to keep the water clean or looking at a particular color to attract anyone. Keep it clean and keep it simple. Um, so water is really, really, really important. You'd be surprised how many insects actually do um, like and are attracted to water also. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up when we're talking about just keeping everybody happy is um, considering what plants to plant when I was thinking about color, that's what brought this up is, you know, adding color into your landscape is really, really, really important to attract. Um, some of my favorites that we use here on the farm are, and obviously we're using all organic, it's up to you what you use. We also use a lot of heirloom varieties. Um, I have such a fascination with color and beauty, so that's really important for me. Um, but, um, some of the things like sunflowers, nasturtiums actually grow wild here in Southern California, so that's really fun, but nasturtium's an amazing one. Calendula and then borage. Um, go ahead and sprinkle and plant a lot of this stuff around those places where you're trying to attract. Color is an attractant for a lot of those, um, those creatures. So um, once I get this kind of finished here, this is gonna stay under our greenhouse structure because we do have a lot of plants behind me um, right now that are starting to flower and we have a lot of stuff going on so this is going to live here and the plan is to plant around it actually kind of make it that it's just grown up around the sides and then this will be accessible to us too but um you know really getting creative and colorful is super important um let's see you know Overall, biodiversity is embracing your space, and we're we're losing that heavily in today's you know today's world. Um, we need to learn to work with rather than against. And um, at Plant Magic, we really um, look at things very differently. We didn't just create uh, a plant food. It's not an NPK, a nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium based plant food. It has all that in there. But when we created that, it wasn't created just to be a, a band-aid or just, a, you know, a, this is just for our plants and it only works for this. You know, we really wanted to take things to a different level. When you work with nature, a lot of things will uh, benefit from bigger approaches. So for us at Plant Magic, it's not just about the plants, it's about the soil too. So when you really start embracing the biodiversity, you realize how big your impact is gonna to be to everything. So by working on all of it simultaneously, I really do think a lot of people will see a huge difference in their spaces. For me, ornamentals aren't one of my biggest interests. I do love flowers, but I use them more for, you know, for beneficials and also for, for edible purposes. 
Um, my focus tends to be on creating the biodiversity for our food and everything I've noticed in all my years of just, you know, working with the earth and working with plants is that the simple approach is a lot times better and really keeping things just so natural. What I've noticed is how much happier everything is. Does not mean that I don't get pests, does not mean that we don't have issues at times. Right now we're dealing with white fly and aphids and that's just by nature of the season. But the happier everything is, that stuff starts to come down and there's a natural balance that's created in, in approaching things this way. And when you start using products that will feed everything, you naturally see a resistance to the quote unquote negative or bad. And when you have happy, healthy plants, they thrive so well that some of the things that the, you know, the, the things that we don't want in our, our gardens and our yards and our landscape and in our, you know, our edible spaces will start to fade away. And I really think that's how nature, not think, I, I totally, you know, feel that that is how nature naturally does take care of the balance. Unfortunately, us humans have kind of gone and mucked that up. Create your own little utopia. And I really genuinely think that's the way we need to start looking at it and, and embrace it. Embrace your space. Um, embrace what you have in your space and, and go from there and really look at it from kind of the soil up. And when I say the soil, that's a pretty big piece, but look at it from the ground up and really consider what you're putting outside and what's going into it and you're going to see a massive difference in your in your space um you know when it comes to soil there's so much that can impact the soil everything that we put around our home naturally will impact our soil if we're putting deterrents for pests that impacts our soil if we're spraying our plants it impacts our soil if we're fertilizing our plants it impacts our soil if we're you know washing our cars in our driveway that impacts our soil if you really want to truly embrace it, the idea is kind of get rid of the junk and, and start from there. Um, so yeah, you know, I think biodiversity as a whole is embracing everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, which that's all up for perspective, but just really looking at where you are, which is key. So you guys knowing that you're on the South shore, work with some of your, your, um, your small nurseries are your best resource to finding um, what works best for your area. Uh, big box stores can be great for some things, but generally you're gonna look at big box kind of across the board, you know, one size fits all products. So embracing your native, um, getting rid of the invasive, and I think you can eat, you can do that. That's, this is probably, that's probably one of the harder parts in the biodiversity. Um, because once again, I suggest doing that without the use of pesticides and herbicides and insecticides. So getting rid of the invasive. Embrace your weeds. Weeds are just amazing. So some of those weeds, there's great plant ID guides if you're unsure what you got. Some stuff, yes, you want to get out of there. But embracing some of it, the pollinators and the beneficials, it's amazing. It's an amazing resource for them. So embrace your weeds. Um, attract, attract, attract. Um, there's amazing resources in New England. One of my favorite seed sources is high mowing seeds. Reason being it's based out of Vermont. When you're looking for seeds and for products for your area, try to resource something that's close to home because those plants were sourced, grown, raised, nurtured, loved close to your home. And that's one of the best ways to keep things local. For me here, I totally use a couple different companies, very different environment here in Southern California. Um, so attract, 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 keep bringing in the native, keep bringing in places for everything to hide and be happy. Insect hotels, which are one of my favorites, get your kiddos involved. It's a wonderful project. There is no right or wrong way to do that. Bring in the birds, bring in the bees, bring in the, you know, the, um, the larger birds, the owls, the bats, bring it all into your property. Um, avoid the use of chemicals by all means. Um, add water to your space. Uh, I love to see what people do with water um, in, their, in their yards. Some people really go all out. If you can do it, do it. Um, maintain a space that is as close to nature as possible. 
Um, I understand some, some people really like concrete and sterile. That's okay. However, that's not going to really bring in the diversity that we're looking at here. And above all, work with nature. Don't work against her. Um, she's brilliant. And without us here, she'll totally take over and heal, I'm sure. But while we are here, we need to help her heal and help her thrive. So I hope this helps everyone on the South Shore. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. And from the Organic Plant Magic family to yours, we always hope that you grow good things. And you can find some links to find more about us at the end of this. And we really wish you all well. Take care. Hi, it's Angie from Organic Plant Magic again. I just want you to know before we wrap this up that at the very end, I have a fast forwarded version of how I built my insect hotel. Just gives you a little insight into how it all went down, what I all put in there. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at Angie, A-N-G-I-E, at organicplantmagic.com. And I'd be more than happy to help share some tips and how I got mine done. Have a wonderful day and I hope that all grows well.